Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Big Gal Shows, the stock investing show. It's completely out of pocket to help put money in your pocket. I'm Austin back with the boys. What's up, Big Gal Shows? It's your boy, Big Gal Show Tyler. We are back. Hey, guys, David's here. Um, we are back. And before we get started, make sure to stop the video, like, comment, subscribe. Um, you know, the usual. We appreciate it. And now that you've done that, let's get started. Yes, sir. Uh, big news coming in from the boy Chuck over at Charles Schwab. Uh, he personally told us, I don't know, they're laying <laughs> off over a thousand workers because of a recent merger with TD Ameritrade. Ooh, Dave, would you like to tell us about it? Yeah, so they merged with TD Ameritrade in, on October 6th, and it cost Charles Schwab about $26 billion. And they're laying off a bunch of these workers because with the merger, there was overlap and kind of redundant jobs with the um, increased employees, I suppose. So they started emailing um, employees that they were going to terminate a couple of days ago. And Dang. it's totaling to be over a thousand workers, which is about 3% of their workforce. So that's pretty, pretty significant. Yeah, I'm surprised we didn't hear more about it before because I guess the merger actually happened earlier in the month on October 6th. But uh, unfortunately, like I do see where the layoffs are coming from because TD Ameritrade is pretty much the exact same type of brokerage as Schwab. So, you know, it it makes sense, but it's it's still sad to see, you know. And I mean, a lot of it is a result of the the illness going around and you know, there's, there's not that much of a need for the jobs, but you know, I, I hope, I hope they're getting assistance in some way. They got a good severance package. Cause you know, I mean, I, it, it would be horrible for anybody to lose their career right now, the way mm -hmm. things are in the world. Yeah. And I wasn't able to figure out what type of job like were being lost essentially. So I have no idea. So uh, let's just say that it's like a average forty thousand dollars salary, and you know times that by a thousand. Charles Schwab Schwab is saving about forty million dollars in uh, pay in payroll. Not bad. Wow. Plus yeah. insurance. Yeah, plus insurance and all that good stuff. Not even including like uh, what's it called, uh, working fees and all that stuff. Yeah, and and paying benefits because of, uh, <coughs> full time salary employees. Yeah, exactly. Or overtime or none of that. It's just basic 40000 So $40 million right there, you know, back in their pockets. Hopefully it takes them a couple extra months before the, the illness, you know, starts uh, eating away their money again. Dude, I, I hope not. But did they, did they merge and become TD Ameritrade or did TD Ameritrade become Schwab? Uh, they became Schwab. Oh, wow. Schwab. That's interesting. Dude, I remember when like TD Ameritrade was getting really popular because everybody started trading themselves like, you know, years and years ago before Robinhood, like when when we were learning about stocks and they were like, oh, there's this new thing called TD Ameritrade. You can do it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to eighth grade. Yeah, so now they control over $6 trillion in terms of client assets. So, you know, it's quite a lot of money. It's like it's like twenty five percent of our the U.S. debt. Yeah, that's like three dollars Canadian. It's pretty good. <laughs> nice, nice, uh, nice. Unreal, bro. Well, that's that's pretty neat. Um, it's it's cool to see the merger, and you know, I I'm excited for how they'll grow going forward, and you know, hopefully they'll be able to get some of these jobs coming back, and uh, you know keep expanding and growing even though the the, the, the economy is less than stable right now especially mm -hmm. the stock market so we'll, we'll see what happens definitely and you know with their 40 million dollars that they're saving per year you know they could probably get a little sponsorship going with big gauchos mm -hmm. yeah yeah for only 39 million <laughs> <laughs> we're cheap so it costs up true you know what else is cheap? The uh, 737 Max Boeing. Ooh, maybe Ooh. maybe TD Ameritrade can loan us some money to buy one. You know, they're on sale. Yeah. So take it away, Tyler. 
All right, boys and girls, investors, non-investors. American Airlines have announced customer tours of a Boeing 737 MAX. So we all know what happened 2018, 2019. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the Boeing 737 MAX went down, crashed, killed everybody on the flight, causing a lot of controversy on the safety of the of the airplane. And... Uh, Obviously, cost a lot of money for the stock in Boeing, but now they're American Airlines is trying to bring them back. You know, give them tours of the what's it called, the plane, get yeah, boost confidence with uh, customers and the ability of the Boeing seven thirty seven Max to actually mm-hmm. take them from point A to point B safely. Yeah. That is interesting. I'm not sure how effective it will be because. Um, I don't know, you know the tours are being aimed at because, you know, like the average person yeah. isn't going to know what the heck all these gadgets and stuff are doing inside the the cockpit. I, I wouldn't have no idea. I'd have to take like a couple hours, oh, maybe a couple days on studying it intensely to figure out exactly what everything is. Well, also an average person isn't going to have $22 million laying around for a 737 MAX 8, like a brand new one. <laughs> Yeah. So, so, you know, like I I don't know. Maybe maybe it's aimed at corporations, but yeah, I mean if it's if it's just to like regular people, maybe it's just like to boost like the, you know, the consumer reputation so that the stock price won't be hurt in the long term, but yeah, I mean they they probably have to do like corporate tours for people. Maybe they'll maybe they'll uh steal all of Airbus's customers or something like that or Lockheed Martin. <laughs> I mean, Boeing isn't making any new planes. Honestly, they're kind of just slowing down production. So they're like, you know what? Those planes that we, what's it called, uh, grounded? Let's just bring them back and just say they're better. Yeah, that's true. And I mean, they they had a ton of layoffs too, like we talked about before, because obviously nobody's traveling, so these airlines don't need to buy a bunch of new planes. So I get it. You know, might be a good time to pick up the Boeing stock, but as far as the company goes, it sounds like they're not doing quite so hot. No, and I don't know, they should just scrap all those because their reputation is ruined. They, there was like, what, four or five crashes within three or four months, so it was yeah, pretty ridiculous. Horrible. It was people, there was probably close to a thousand people who passed away just because of this um, malfunction on the airplane. Yeah, it's 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 pretty outrageous, and supposedly they have it fixed. But you know, I'm gonna be honest. Like, if you have the little flight tracker and they tell you, you know, which plane that you're flying, and it says 737 Max, like, I'd probably cancel the flight. Yeah, yeah, like, that that's that's how much I don't trust it. <laughs> like, I'd I'd rather have the older, like, early 2000s and like 90s planes that are still in service because, like, I know those are proven, but yeah yeah it's just it's just too risky and you know they're they're i wonder if they're still offering the refunds and free cancellations for those flights that have the max eight on them like they used to i don't know i I honestly doubt it just because i doubt they would continue it that long but that is something interesting to look into yeah probably not especially in this kind of economy but Mm -hmm. you know we'll we'll see how much We'll see how much money it ends up costing them in the long run, but you know the there's other there's other places bleeding money too, you know like uh like the China and U.S. sanctions. It's costing Ooh. people a lot of money. Trade war part six dun, dun, never dun. ends, dude. Yeah, U.S. approved uh eighteen one point eight billion dollar sale of weapons missiles. And to to Taiwan, (laughs) I guess that's it. Um, Yeah, that's a that's a that's a pretty astonishing figure, especially with the trade war going on. So it is wild. I I wonder what kind of weapons, missiles, and weapons they sold to Taiwan in order to total up to one point eight billion dollars. One point eight billion (laughs) dollars. The weapons, missiles, weapons. (laughs) Also, missiles and weapons. And missile weapons to Taiwan. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> <I was> half- <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. Um, 
<laughs> so uh, China's seeing this as a threat because uh, obviously it's not in their best interest to be arming Taiwan. But you know, we're 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 still making that money, so we're all good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't really know much about I guess like the foreign policy in terms of like Taiwan and China. I don't. I guess they don't like each other. Maybe I, I have no idea. I don't either. I just. Actually, no, I'm not even going to say what I think because I'm sure it's not right. <laughs> Respect that. We need, a, so. we need a foreign policy consultant on the show. <laughs> <laughs> True. But, like, it doesn't really seem like that's that many weapons and missiles because some of those missiles cost, like, $2 million, $3 million a pop, you know? <laughs> Yeah, dude, weapons, missiles, and weapons are super expensive. And you know, one one point eight billion dollars is like is like going to the dollar store with like fifty cents, you know? I mean All right, all right, here. This is what it really is instead of missiles, <laughs> weapons and weapons. All right. So <laughs> they approved a proposal to sell missiles, rocket artillery, aerial reconnaissance, sensors, and a related gear to Taiwan. Oh, so it seems like it's just like self-defense stuff, probably. The radar or they're doing, stuff. Su- or they're doing surveillance on China. Mm-hmm. Maybe, yeah. Ooh, espionage. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, you know, it's good that the uh, U.S. is selling stuff to other places, making that cash. Um, yeah, because we need it right now. <laughs> yeah. All right. Here's some more info, guys. So. Uh, China's Communist Party has long sought to assimilate Taiwan with the Chinese mainland, saying it will use force if necessary. So, <laughs> God. so basically, what it is is if the U.S. is supplying them t- Taiwan with, you know, defense mechanisms to, you know, fight against China, then it makes it harder for them to take over. Yeah, so it's gonna be that's mutiny. why. Exactly, and China doesn't like that, so that's why they place sanctions on the, the U.S. Interesting. So it seems like it's just self-defense stuff then, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, you can use a missile defensively, offensively, (laughs) use weapons. I guess so. It's neutrality. It's like the Cold War. But, like, dude, if if there's a civil war in China or, like, a war between China and Taiwan, like, our our imported goods from China, because we get, like, a ton of stuff from China, we're very reliant. So, like, imagine if, like, nobody was working in the factories because they were like fighting a war against taiwan and like we already we're already like our economy is suffering from covid and now we don't have anything from china <laughs> be so, Honestly, be I mean, so cooked. yeah I, I don't know like the military capabilities of taiwan and china but just like looking at the economy and the population difference i'm sure china would probably just <laughs> yeah. obliterate taiwan in probably less than a month honestly yeah, China's got way more money, people, and resources to fight. But, you know, hopefully that doesn't happen because that would be terrible. And if that did happen, I'm pretty sure that would be against, like, the UN regulation. So that would spark, like, World War Three, I guess. Oh, let's not, let's not have a World War Three. you know. I'm not, I'm not ready for that. I don't, hey, think, anyone, I don't think I'm ever going to be ready for that. So hopefully it just never happens. Mm-hmm. Anything's possible. Let's just hope we don't get drafted because, you know, we're, we're the youngest. So we'd, yeah. we'd go first. Oh, we'll have to defer. We'll say that we're busy on the mainland with our big gadget <laughs> podcast. Sorry, we can't. We have a we have a famous <laughs> stock <laughs> show. Hey, uh, make sure make sure you people. hit that subscribe button. We're going to a million, so Tyler gets a full back tattoo of uh, Money Man Gaucho. That nice uh, logo right there. I don't know about all full back, but I'm talking about top left corner of my back. If, we, if this video gets five likes, Tyler will get a tattoo <laughs> on the neck of Money oh, Man no. Gaucho. Five. <laughs> Hundred thousand smash, likes. Smash that like button. Five likes. <laughs> Jeez. Why are you selling me so short, Osti? <laughs> Dude, I'm not. I'm not selling you short at all. I'm just saying, like, you know, if you if you stop and think about it, it's a really good deal. But you know, if you stop and think about what's happening in the economy, you realize there's no deal going on, and uh, our economy is pretty much screwed until after the election. Yeah, like so, transition. So, you know, we predicted this, but the stimulus is officially going to be put off until after the election. And, you know, we all kind of were talking about <laughs> this for the past couple of weeks that this was definitely going to happen. News. So, yeah, I guess there's not going to be a stimulus check for 
I don't know, probably January, if even the earliest, I would just imagine. <laughs> Dude, yeah, January, like, if we're lucky, because if you think about it, they're going to take time off for Christmas and, uh, you know. The New Year. Hanukkah, you know, like, else, Kwanzaa, Thanksgiving, uh, New Year, yeah. I mean, it's it's unlimited. Plus, they still have, like, don't they still have, like, vacation days that, like, they could take in November and December? <laughs> I don't really know that. I know their calendar, like the Senate doesn't really work all that hard, honestly. They have, I think they almost have as many days off as they do on. It's ridiculous. Uh, yeah, it explains why they're not doing anything. I wish I could curse <laughs> on this podcast. But, um, but you know, Dow we're family friendly, so we don't do that. Yeah, we don't. But just imagine what we're thinking. And, you know, you can see how upset uh, the American people are. But uh, Dow Jones was as low as. Uh, 810 points today but closed at down over 650 points on the day so it was it was kind of a bloodbath after that news you know obviously obviously i didn't think anything was going to happen because republicans and democrats are so far apart and honestly i feel like this election could be pretty contested like almost 50 50 and there might be it might take, you know, extra months to tally all the votes if it's close. So mm-hmm. there's a chance we might not know who the president is until next year. Dude. Beginning of next year. Until like Holy. this time next year. <laughs> They're still counting. It's like, there's like a thousand points off. <laughs> <laughs> the year's 2022. It's like two years are up and they finally figure out who's the president. <laughs> <laughs> the electoral college is like exactly 50 50 they're counting every single like popular vote <laughs> <laughs> it's like that one movie oh, where gosh. it comes down to one person's vote That's so scary bro. what was that movie called i don't even it was like from some dude in texarkana or something oh texarkana i don't know what that movie was called it's irrelevant but Bro, you, you no. get out, you get on Twitter some days and you think that like one one person's vote is gonna swing the whole election the way people talk about it, but you know, that's I don't I don't want to get into that. <laughs> well, whatever happens, happens. You know, go vote, do your part, and uh, pray. Yeah, pray. I'm vo- I'm voting tomorrow, so everybody else should do it too. Hell yeah! But uh, awesome. <laughs> so, are you doing like early voting or something? Like, or do they just have bo- voting booths? um so oh you you cut out but yeah i i actually got my mail-in ballot like a month ago and i i've i've been so i've been so undecided on a lot of things and so i've i finally made my mind up and i'm gonna go drop it off tomorrow at the last minute so yeah what about you boys did you do mail-in i did not get a mail-in i was on the mail-in list but they stopped sending me so that happened to a lot of people. Yeah, if you didn't get like mail in like last year and you tried to do it this year, like I heard they just wouldn't do it. <laughs> yeah, I didn't mind mail in. So you already done? Yeah, I just kind of clicked my eyes and just checked off random boxes and turned it in. <laughs> quick, quick disclaimer: Please don't do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just awful. kidding. I I actually voted my heart. So. Yeah. Yeah, I will. Yeah. I will too. It'll be. It'll be interesting. So, I mean, regardless of the outcome, we will get through this. Yeah, people. People always act like every election is gonna. You know, the country's gonna end. Like <laughs> depending on who becomes president. Like it's. I don't know. Like, it's the. I don't know. I just. I just hate when people get like so upset about the election. Like I'm moving to Canada. It's like, right, oh, I'm sure you will. I'm sure you're going to uproot and move to a different country if <laughs> your candidate doesn't become president because, you know, that's... <laughs> yeah, they're just like the overdramatic people. Totally agree. Yeah, so at the end of the day, different president, same president, we're still honestly in the same position, the same place. doesn't really affect us too much in a sense because, like, I remember when I was in... When, o- when Obama was president and, like, when Trump became president... Nothing really changed for me. Yeah, it's like, yes. yeah, it's it's not like if a new it's not like if a new president comes in like overnight anything's gonna happen. I mean, like if 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 there is a new president, like it's not gonna be until January twentieth anyway. 
Yeah. And like the passing legislation takes a lot of work. So like you wouldn't see any major change for at least a year. Exactly. Yeah, it's probably so, true. Yeah. So at the so, end of the day, as long as we do our thing and uh, we persevere, stay positive, we'll survive. That's why we have free speech, checks and balances, and a shortage of commercial aircraft orders. Yeah. <laughs> US yeah. history, baby. We do yeah, have US a, history. a huge a huge shortage on airliners being ordered. So um around the world, this is every every country in the world, there was only thirteen aircrafts ordered during the third quarter. <laughs> what? <laughs> Bro, why is this not the clickbait? <laughs> Dude, yeah, we'll so, change it. So there's only uh there's only thirteen planes being uh placed for order to begin construction. And last year, there was 130, or over 130, not exactly 130. It was a little bit more than that. Dang. Damn, so, someone, where'd you find this? So, yeah, the uh, the demand for new aircrafts is definitely plummeted. And, um, yeah, it's not coming back, I guess. Yeah, I couldn't say that either. And no airline has been profitable except Mesa Airlines. You know, shout out to Mesa. <laughs> and, even even then, they only made $2 million, which like sounds like a lot of money until you realize how much a plane costs and you realize that won't even get a fraction of a new plane. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm, I'm not surprised. People are just going even further into debt with the airlines trying to buy new planes. It's like, yeah, it's not going to get customers. Yeah, and air travel is not respect, expected to recover until at the very earliest, 2023, but it's predicted that it could even take until 2025. Holy crap. <laughs> if it takes that long, we're not going to have airlines. Make sure you buy Mesa Airlines. Take the dub. Ticker is Mesa. <laughs> Only profitable airline. Shout out. Dude, yeah, like, so. I'm not even kidding. Holy. Did you know how many airlines are going to be gone by then? Like one. Dude, literally all that's going to be left is like American has absorbed every company and they just have a monopoly <laughs> on air travel. There's going to be a lot of mergers. That's all I have to say. <laughs> American, American Airlines, Southwest Airlines, and uh, Canadian. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Air Canada, for sure. That's it. Those are the only three. That's a bummer, <laughs> dude. Uh, Jet, JetBlue and Delta are my favorite, but I don't, I don't think they'll make it. No? You don't think so? Delta, maybe. But, I mean, let's face it. Nobody has the same power as American Airlines. So. And you also have United Airlines, which is going to get absorbed. Yep. Potentially, yeah, probably. That's that's very true as well. I think I think somebody will buy United because they bought they bought Continental Airlines before. So not even Spirit. You don't think Spirit's gonna be able to persevere? Dude, hell no! Are you kidding? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. They're kind of cool, I guess. No, they're cool. they're really cool. We need to we need to try them out for our uh, winter break trip. You know, get a twenty dollar plane ticket with no seats. And you just kind of stand up with a handrail like a bus. <laughs> 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 That'd be so crazy. <laughs> You'd imagine takeoff. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty our, our landing. <laughs> landing too. Oh my god, landing would be horrible. You break your and knees. It'd be like it'd be like zero gravity. You'd be like in the air, just like holding onto it, like you're doing a pull up. <laughs> and then you just slam your face on the floor. <laughs> it's like somebody lets. It's just like some old lady like lets go. She just, <laughs> like, <laughs> slams onto the cabin door. <laughs> Flip and slide. <laughs> but then they're like all right every hope everybody's practice their pull-ups <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i heard that they um they don't really latch the door because they can't afford that mechanism so all they do is they just have they just have the air traffic control just like duct tape the door closed <laughs> jesus <laughs> the first airplane that doesn't have <laughs> pressurization <laughs> just like <laughs> <laughs> what <laughs> everybody's like passing out because they're at 30,000 feet <laughs> no air <laughs> hey I heard you don't need air if you can have nitrogen that's just as good that's true maybe maybe we can uh, maybe they can just save even more money and fly like as close to the ozone layer as possible <laughs> make air travel even faster <laughs> You're from like the U.S. to China in two hours. <laughs> <laughs> Fatality rate, twenty-five percent. 
Holy. <laughs> Everybody's blacked out. The pilots are just like, they just have like oxygen tanks. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, they're like, well, we had to get customers somehow. <laughs> Plane, planes just like crumpling in because <laughs> the air pressure. I know, no, I, all the passengers have one air tank they have, they have to share. <laughs> it's like a, it's like a battle royale for the air. You know, I'd probably uh, trust it more than a seven thirty seven. Me too. Seven thirty seven's fine. Max eight. I'm out. That's where that's where they lose me. All right. I don't understand. Why don't they just change the name to something? Just come up with a new model with a new name. <laughs> yeah, honestly, the trick most people. <laughs> <laughs> Our brand new plane, the seven thirty seven Max X. <laughs> Max just, nine instead of Max. Oh, you just don't call it the seven thirty seven <laughs> Max. Just call it the I don't know eight fifty five <laughs> Max nine. <laughs> the Boeing four twenty. <laughs> yeah, seriously, V six. Yeah, I mean, I had fault for that trick. It would trick me. Would too. But, hey, if you're getting killed on airline stock, you're going to want to check out some of the big winners, big losers, and the sleepers. So uh, we'll try to get you some of your money back. Let's hit that, hit that sound. Ooh. Duncan Brands Group up 16.12%. Um, you know, I'm kind of a kind of a local coffee guy. You know, I, I don't know if you can tell by all my you know, piercings and airpods and sweater but I, i'm a hipster but duncan's got <laughs> duncan's got pretty good coffee too and donuts they do i love their donuts um they have some pretty good coffee too but i don't really ever go to duncan donuts so yeah, yeah. it's it's good in a pinch but you know i'm gonna be real like starbucks iced coffee is better true i mean the only thing duncan has going for them is that new um what's it called ghost pepper uh, donut yeah yeah it's like oh, if you ever wanted to know if they needed attention because they're not getting customers just look at the ghost pepper donut yeah doesn't make <laughs> any pretty sense. yummy 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 new big, new big gacha challenge uh comment below if you want us to eat a dozen uh ghost pepper donuts <laughs> oh my goodness <laughs> feel so horrible I'm i'll down. do it if you do it i'm down let's do it <laughs> stomach would explode from like all the sweets and the pepper what we could do is we could have one donut. We could scrape off all the frosting and then just snort the frosting real fast. And then eat the <laughs> oh, <donut>. God. Jesus, <laughs> man, God. you're crazy. What if it was like a Boston cream donut and it was just like, it was just like filled with oh. ghost pepper frosting? Oh, yucky. It was so nasty, dude. <laughs> just eat around the sides. You just still feel the spice. What's that? What's that thing you can do, like with chemistry, to like uh, desensitize your tongue, so like you don't taste spice? Oh, it's oh, I know. It's like that pill. Yeah, yeah, it's not that pill. pill. You put on your tongue, and then it just completely changes everything. Is that the litmus paper? Uh, No, that's for like a science experiment. Oh yeah, that that's if that's if uh, it's an acid or a base. Mm Yeah. I think you're looking for the word maybe i don't know antagonist maybe i don't know oh yeah yeah i mean dave's the resident expert so True. Really? i don't know i've never heard of that but this would be, probably be an antagonist in my opinion but number two we got husky energy incorporated up 12.84 percent and they are a canadian energy company and they just kind of you know mine hydrocarbons Ooh. That sounds tasty. Yeah. Might be might be good for them to get some, back in the energy business because I know uh, Alberta is dried up of their oil pretty much. So they uh, are yeah. they got they got it rough out there in uh, more rural Canada. So hopefully this brings them some good fortune. True, sure. Canada. And I looked it up and it said they only have a fifty five percent chance of going bankrupt. So that's why they're up on the day. Fifty five. Oh, <laughs> not bad. Not bad. <laughs> <laughs> I like Holy those odds. Moly. I'm Gotta serious. Figure out how to buy some of that. <laughs> so I don't know why uh, why it went up, but you know, I guess 55 is not too bad in some people's eyes. Yeah. Also, I figured out the name of the Jeez. of the pill we were talking about. So it's called an M Berry Miracle Fruit Tablet. You can also get it on Amazon. 
So what it does is it contains a glycoprotein called miracolin, which binds to the tongue's taste buds when the fruit is consumed. So basically as, it acts as a sweetener to your tongue. So it turns anything sour sweet. Bro, we, we, should, do, we should eat like five of those and then go set a new record for the Blazing Challenge. Just like don't even blink. <laughs> Dude, I'm down. <laughs> just be like, just like, man, these, these aren't hot enough. Just like saying they're like super calm. I mean, we could do that and then take muscarin to get our mouth really salivated and just start slamming them down. We'll be like drilling on the table. We'll <laughs> be like, <laughs> <laughs> dude, that'd be so good for like bar bets. You just like, you just like bet some dude at the bar like a thousand dollars that you can eat like 20 of them. <laughs> I mean, I dude, think we- I could probably eat 20 just on my own, honestly. I don't know, dude. That would kill your stomach, but like you, you could make some big money hustling dudes at the bar. <laughs> big money moves, big money gauchos. Big gaucho, big gains, but not all gauchos are gains. That's why we got the big gaucho losers. Boo. What's the first Boo. one? Sap SC. They are down 23.16%. And they came out today warning of a very, very poor earnings report for q3 and they are a german software company huh you'd think the technology sector would be doing good but i guess it's one of those recovery stocks that's a gamble yeah so i guess you know something happened and they're not doing too hot but they are the third largest publicly traded software company in the world so they're pretty big boys you know yeah, no doubt. Oh, that was that was the one that um, we had them on the big gaucho winners because they were doing the they were doing the software for wins online gaming. Yes, that's the one. It's all coming back to me now. It's all coming back. Yeah, Ooh. now they're the big losers. They I know. cashed out. They knew when to cash out, but our our cruise is never going to come back. Just like Royal Caribbean probably won't. Uh, down nine point six five percent today. Cruise ships fall the hardest. Yeah, I mean, we were planning on doing a cruise, uh, like a second cruise with Royal through Royal Caribbean. So might have to hit them up for an even bigger discount now. True. Shout out to the Bahamas. You know, Royal Caribbean. If you want to sponsor the video, sponsor uh, the Bahamas. Biz at biggelchos <laughs> we'll just we'll call up Royal Caribbean and tell them that we'll sell them one share back to their uh, headquarters if they allow us a free uh, suite on a seven day cruise around the world, or not around the world, I guess around uh, around the Caribbean. Seems like a fair deal. Yeah. We want uh, a suite on the top floor, penthouse only. It's the only acceptable option. Mm-hmm. Unlimited passes to everything. All last pass. Ooh, all access. All access. Ooh. Well, True. I'm getting a little tired, boys. I think I need an all access pass to a nap right now. Sleep, 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 sleep. sleep. <laughs> Ooh, Ooh, big Costco. All right, Never goes go. down. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly why I put that on there for today. So we know that election night is coming up next week or in two weeks. One and week. we are, oh wow, one week. We're expecting yeah. a big dip because, you know, that's what happens. That's what usually happens with an election. And uh, what better way than to, to um, buy up on some stocks that will not go down as much as others. So, you know, we got big boy Costco always goes up gradually and slowly, which is nice. We love that. Mm-hmm. You know, can't go wrong with them. They're just, they're always busy. You know, when the pandemic hit, they was there right there for everybody to buy out all the toilet paper <laughs> yeah, True. in the water in the water that's a good point dude no one's ever gonna stop shopping at costco because it's like a doomsday preppers paradise on top of all that so you know that's it's got a very cult following i would guess it yeah, does. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna get a costco card soon yeah you know when we went to costco that one time i swear half the people in the store were wearing ghillie suits they had like radios and stuff. Remember that, Tyler? Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, and they they have the oxygen mask, and there's like an underground bumper or bunker if you have the VIP membership. Yep. 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 But um, 
What's number two? We got Amazon up here as well. Yep, another, you know, really solid company. They're basically a monopoly on the world. You sure. know, what better way than have a... They might be a little pricey right now, but they're probably still going to go up too because, you know, they're bringing out the cardless uh, supermarkets and stores. And uh, they're just... Everybody shops through them. They're like the next... Uh, they are the next big thing, so... Might not might as well get some of that as well when the election and the dri- the dip happens because they're probably not going to be as affected. Definitely mm-hmm. not. Everybody's always relying on e-commerce. Yep. You know, Amazon. What they should do is they should buy some uh, some cargo ships so they can really control everything, every aspect. <laughs> Could you imagine, dude? dude? They can afford it. <laughs> if the, if dude. Amazon owned oil tankers, oh, dude, it would be over. They'd have so much money they could bail out the U.S. Uh, economy. Dude. They need to buy out um, Lordstown Motors, have their first Amazon uh, <laughs> EV vehicle. Dude, I saw I saw an Amazon uh, warehouse in Chandler today, like a distribution center. Oh, it wow. was it was probably a, a quarter to a half mile long. I'm not even kidding. I have my a lot of there. Yeah. Oh, in Chandler. I, um, I don't know which one he works at, but he works at a warehouse, like a distribution yeah. center. So I'm assuming Bro, that's the only one there. It's scary big and like there's just a flood of trucks driving in like some post-apocalyptic movie. It's nuts. <laughs> dude, they're taking over, bro. They're going to be Skynet. Just watch. I know, dude. I miss that magazine, Sky Mall and all that. Mm-hmm. Terminator. Uh, Terminator. You can't terminate Casey's General Store, though. Uh <laughs> They're on the up and up. Uh, everybody's favorite local gas station in the Midwest and the Southwest. So uh, they're not an oil refinery. They just have some good convenience stores. It's kind of like it's kind of like Bucky's or like if if Cracker Barrel met like Quick Trip. So That's do with cool. that what you will. Um, basically, that one that one's just up there to see if anyone's listening. Mm-hmm. Great store, great store. Never been there, but I can imagine that, you know, it's in the Midwest, in the South, so they're probably pretty friendly people up there. I'm sure if the Terminators came to destroy us, that the people working at Casey's would, you know, say hello and howdy to the uh, to the Terminators, and, you know, it's, they'd survive for sure. It's just that Southern polite, you got to. But um, you also got to get yourself on Anchor, because if you're making a podcast... It will live beyond the Terminator days. So uh, let's hit that ad and get our sponsorship. Boom. Uh, there laka, are no laka. Laka, laka, laka. No new additions to the bankruptcy boneyard today. Um, unfortunately, we have some sad news. Um, I'm now in third place. <laughs> uh, I've been on a winning streak after a losing streak. So, uh, he took the dub today, so if you're following along at home, uh, that would mean Dave is in first place with 38 points. Canal has 32, I have 31, and Tyler has 29. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, so, what was, it? what was that number I picked earlier? You picked sorry, the closing sorry, guys. number, I think. No, it was it was a little below that. Um, I did twenty seven three eighty five point six nine. Oh, you think a three hundred point dip then, huh? Yeah, we'll see. I mean, honestly, you never really know. It's anybody's game. Yeah, I'm with you. To be honest, it could go either way. I feel like it's gonna dip too, but I'm gonna I'm gonna play a safe ball. I'm gonna do twenty seven six eighty five point three eight. No, isn't that the close today? Yeah, it, it is. I <laughs> uh, uh, pulled an Austin. I had to. Austin, you're winning. It's time for me to take a comeback. I can't. I can't mm-hmm. be in last place again. Dude, I know. I'm. I'm getting. I'm getting close. I need to. I need to step my game up a little bit. Mm-hmm. Dave, yeah. what do you think? <sighs> it's really hard. You know, it's. I, I think it might climb back a little bit tomorrow. Because the oh. drop, the drop was pretty, pretty large. I don't imagine it dropping a lot consecutive days. You know, it could possibly happen. I suppose. Never know. So, you know, I'm gonna say twenty-seven eight. 
Okay. I respect it. Just a little bit of a bump up. Yeah, just a little bit. Okay. Well, I think we have some really bold numbers and good predictions. Canal has not submitted a number, so we're not uh, not sure what's going on there. But, yep, we're um, not liable for Canal's prediction. Yeah, that's true. Uh, just just like we're not responsible for any losses, we're not responsible for Canal. But uh, we do want to thank you guys for listening. We hope you enjoyed the show. Leave us a voice message on anchor.fm slash gauchos or biggauchos.com. If you want to send an investing tip, we might play on the show. Tyler, disclaimer, please. All right, big gauchos, quick disclaimer because we love disclaimers. We are not licensed brokers, and everything said on this podcast is uh, our opinions from our experiences. We are not liable for any lost gains, but we are directly liable for all major gains. With that being said, please invest safely, big gauchos. Do your research. Do everything you need to do before you invest your money. And uh, one more thing, please like and subscribe. We're growing every day because of you guys, and uh, we love it, and we love y'all. We love making money with y'all. And now, Dave, let the viewers know our amazing Instagram. Yeah, so the Instagram is at Big Gauchos. So come over and check us out. You know, drop us some likes, some follows, some comments, just like you do on the YouTube channel. We appreciate it, and we thank you for your support. Yes, sir, we definitely do. Make sure after you give us a like and subscribe over here and you go and like our pages on Instagram, you're also checking us out on streaming. Hey, hope you're listening on streaming already. But if you're not, it's a good way to listen to it at work, on your drive to work, you know, whatever. Just uh, don't tell anybody you're listening to it if your job depends on it. We are on Apple, Spotify, Anchor, YouTube, Google, Pocket Cast, Breaker, Radio Public, Overcast, or you can add us to your own RSS feed. Any application works. Make sure if you're listening to us specifically on Apple, you give us a review one to five stars. We do not accept anything less than four and a half stars. You already know the drill. Leave us a nice review. It really helps us out, uh, gets us up on those ratings. And boys, we got anything else to add before we go? Yeah. So Canal just put his number in, and it was 27,900. Again. Yeah. He's going same number two days in a row. So. Yeah. See if that risky strategy pays off and uh, make sure you go vote. True. True. All right. Uh, We'll see you next time. Good night from Arizona. Hope you made some money today. Peace.